great day to be in the house of God. Y'all sound awesome. Let's uh, pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you. And we just give you the glory and the honor and the praise right now. And Father, I thank you were two or more gathered in your name. You're right here in the middle of us. So, Father, we lay down our cares and our concerns and our worries. And Father, we rest right now in your presence. And God, many of us in this room today, we need your presence more today than ever before. And I pray that you'd fill us to overflowing today with your goodness, with your joy, and with your peace. The Father, you would set our feet on a firm foundation as we head out of this place later today. That, God, we will experience your will and your presence and your blessing in our life. But Father, I thank you that today the sons of God are led by your spirit. And we're led by you, filled by you today. In Jesus' precious name. Do you agree with that? Say amen. Amen, amen. amen. Well, uh, this morning I want to... So glad you're here. If you're with us for the very first time, I'd like to welcome you. And you may be visiting for a couple of reasons. One, you're looking for church. Or number two, you're just looking for God. And either way, I'm glad you're here, and I hope you find both of them today. And so if you're a guest with us today and you want to know a little bit more about who we are as a church, uh, there's a connection card in the back of your seat. Grab it at some point in the service, fill it out. Our ushers will come by a little bit later and collect that from you. Or if you're a member of this body and you say, hey, I've got something going on in my life. I need some people to be praying. Uh, we have a, a, a prayer list that we pray for every single uh, week, a, prayer, a group of prayer, prayer team that does that. And then also on Tuesday mornings at 630, we have a prayer meeting here in this auditorium where we lift these needs up. And so regardless whether you're here this first time or you have something like that going on, let us know. Fill out a connection card. If you can do one more thing for me, turn around and say hi to somebody right around you real quick. Well, good morning. Uh, once again, before we jump into the word today, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to share something with you. We're going to take about five minutes before we jump into the word uh, about our mission team that's going to El Salvador. As a church, we do short-term mission trips. And this year's trip, as we've done in the last four years, I believe, is to El Salvador. So Pastor Steven's leading this trip, and I'd love for him to tell you a little bit more about our El Salvador mission trip. Yeah, well, good morning, church. I'm Pastor Steven. I'm the operations pastor here. And like Pastor Eddie said, I get to lead our team to El Salvador this year. We are super excited. We're going to be working with Amazing Love Missions, which is Wally and Judy Cook, one of the missionaries that we support here at the church. And this year, our team is going to be going. There's 15 of us. We're going to be praying for people that are sick. We're going to be laying hands on them. We're going to be preaching the gospel. And we are going to be meeting the needs of the poor while we're there. We're going to be literally fulfilling that great commission. And what I wanted to do this morning, you notice there's a QR code right behind me. I want everyone, if you could, take your phone out for a second. Do me a favor. Take a picture of this because this is going to give you some prayer points. These are things that we need prayer for on, our, on this trip. So if you can be lifting our team up in prayer as we lead, we're going to leave on a 22nd of this month. So be, please be praying for us. Pray while we're there. And actually, I want to go ahead and ask this team, team members, go ahead and come up on stage. I would love it, Pastor Eddie, if you could just anoint us, pray for us, and, and send us out. Yeah. All right. Let's give this team a big hand. Come on, show them some love. They, uh, I'm proud that they represent us in El Salvador. And I can't wait to hear the reports of what God's going to do through them in the ministry time. So stretch your hands towards them and let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you uh, for these missionaries, God, who are going to go preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick, and help the needy. God, I pray that you would watch over them. I pray that you would uh, work through them in a way that is unexpected. And Father, they would see they'd be a part of something bigger than themselves. And that, Father, you would change lives, Father, whatever the meeting is, whether it's in a school or in a church or out on the street. God, I thank you that you're going before them and you're making a way, Father, for life change to take place in people's lives. Father, we pray that you'd bring them home safe and healthy. But most of all, Father, I pray that you would use them in a miraculous way. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, just as they're, uh, amen, come on, give them a big hand. I want to share with you real quick a video uh, of Tia. Yeah, so one of the, one of the things that we're going to be doing is we always take care of a orphanage called, and we, we call it Tia Anna's, and I want to show you Tia Anna's, some footage that we took last year on our trip, and share firsthand what we're going to be doing, and share with you guys some needs that we want to be able to help her out and the kiddos out with this year. Hey, it's 
behind me is a home of Tiana and 16 kids. Tiana on November 5th, 1991, um, God called her to take in kids off the streets who have moms who are prostitutes. Um, a lot of the kids that live in this household, they don't have dads. Their moms have either passed away at this point or if they are still around, they only see them on a weekend and then they don't see them for months on end. Um, they don't have a parent who is in their life. And Tiana has supernaturally filled that role with God. And um, like 30 plus years ago, she told God, like, God, if this is what you called me to do, you're gonna have to make it happen. And I wish you could hear her testimony of the goodness and faithfulness that God has done for her. Um, and so today we got to go to a place called Price Mart um, and it's like our their version of Costco and we got to buy all of these kids new pillows and new blankets like new bedding for all of their beds and I learned today that they've never had the opportunity to get new pillows um, and they I wish you could see the sheer joy that they had on their face to see pillows something that I, I get to buy like every six months if I want to and they don't have the opportunity to because they have stuff that has been passed down or worn or used and these kids get to have something that's so essential to our everyday life yet they value it so much more and we got to eat lunch with them right now all of the team is currently playing some makeshift version of basketball and it's not going very good and there is a language barrier but at the end of the day it doesn't matter if we can speak the same language or not God is so good and we get to love on these kids and they get to love on us and we get to leave this week knowing at the end of the day despite what their life looks like that God is taking care of them. He has provided a roof over their head and we've gotten to live on these 16 kids. And um, Tiana, this is her third generation of kids. Right now they're ranging from the age of five all the way up to the age of 20. And she's seen about 75 kids. And this isn't run by the government. This isn't supported by anything. It's just supported by um, our phenomenal missionary Wally Cook and his team and by people like us who get to come here and get to love on these kids. Same thing as whenever you tithe on Sundays or do offerings um, and you put it towards missions, it goes to places like this, to kids who don't have anything yet they get to be blessed by it. Um, our team last year uh, was able to raise some money together and this past Christmas, we were able to send the kids out and they were able to buy brand new shoes. They have never had the opportunity to buy a new pair of sneakers. And we got to see them today and they got to show us all of their shoes and they showed us all of their rooms and they're just so overjoyed by just the small acts of shoes and bedding and a pillow. And if you could, the one thing I would want for you to see while you're here is how good God is in another country. How God takes care of his people despite what it may look like. And to me, this doesn't seem like much, but to them, this is one of the most beautiful, safest places they could ever have. And so I hope that you get to join us next year. Amen. Uh, I wanna share with you real quick now, to just let you know, as a church, uh, if you give $10, $1 uh, goes back out to the foreign mission field, domestic missions, helping the hungry, helping the poor, make sure the gospel's preached in third world countries. And so you're already supporting Wally's ministry by just giving to City Point. In fact, we're one of his largest contributors as a church. Um, but I, I want to allow you to be a part or invite you to be a part of this mission trip this year. They showed you the chicken coop for Tiana's house and also that there's some rusty stairs that lead to it that needs to be totally renovated. That, that chicken coop is not like a pastime or a hobby. It's how they feed, is part of the diet they feed these children. So we asked Wally, Wally, what can we do to help these, this Tiana's house? And he said, you know, it'd be great. They need a new chicken coop that's secure, that can protect the chickens from predators, things like that. And so the cost of that is around $3,000 for us to do it. And so I'm going to ask during this service today, just ask the Lord what he would have you to do um, to, to be a part of that. We need, if we have over $3,000 come in, uh, that overage that comes in today, we'll go ahead and give it to Wally for the other needs because not only does he support, we support that, but there's a lot of other needs in an impoverished co country that we can support. So, and the good news is today, if you give in the offering today for missions, uh, there's over and above what you normally do, half of that will be matched. So if you give uh, like $50, we have a matching donor who'll give $25. Or if you give $10, it actually, they'll give five. So that turns into a $15 donation up to $5,000. Uh, the last thing I want to remind you of before we show our announcements, there are little wristbands uh, and bracelets uh, in your seat, and that's for you to take home, and we'd love for you to wear it while they're on the mission field July, starting June 22nd, just to be, remind you to pray for them, that they're more, that we want God to work through them and, and us be a blessing to that country and see lives change. And so pray about that offering, we'll receive our offering at the end, uh, and uh, so let's watch some video announcements and see what's coming up next at City Point.
Hey everybody, I'm Wes, and you picked a great day to join us. There's a lot happening at City Point, so let's take a second, get you up to speed on everything going down this summer. Check this out. We had such a great time worshiping with everybody last Wednesday during our midweek service. If you happen to miss it, don't worry, you'll have another opportunity every quarter to experience it yourself. Follow us online and learn more and make sure to save the date for our next midweek service. Next Sunday is our Father's Day at the Movie service at City Point. Pastor Eddie is going to share a message using clips from the movie The Covenant that will help illustrate spiritual truth in a relatable and unique way. We've got the popcorn and soda ready. All you need to do is invite your friends and family to join you, and we'll see you next Sunday. Hey, church family, as the community pastor here at City Point, I love helping people get involved in our community group system. I believe it's the best place to connect with others, be encouraged in your faith, and grow in your walk with God. Now, at the moment, we're on a break for the summer, but that doesn't mean we aren't busy planning and getting ready for our next semester of community groups. We've seen a lot of new faces and families over the past several months, and we wanna make sure we've got enough groups and group leaders ready and equipped to help people take their next step in the fall. So if you're interested in leading a small group, I wanna invite you to our group leader training taking place on Sunday, June 30th. It's a one hour class where we're gonna share our heart behind community groups, equip you with resources to lead a group successfully and help answer any questions you have about the group you're wanting to lead. Lunch and training materials are gonna be provided. So we ask that you register at citypointchurch.com groups and take your next step as a community group leader. One more thing, Kids Blast is happening at the end of the month on Friday, June 28th. This is a free one night event for any kids in the first through sixth grade. It's gonna be a blast with water games, inflatables, food, and other things in store. We'll also have a time of worship and a special message from our City Kids pastor, Joe Castile. Spots are limited, so make sure you register your kids at citypointchurch.com slash kidsblast today. And that's everything going on at City Point. If you miss something or you have any questions, feel free to talk to our team at the info desk or email us at info at citypointchurch.com. All right, let's continue the service and welcome Pastor Eddie to the stage as he continues our Summer at City Point series. Good morning. That's not Pastor Eddie. I know. I know. My name is Brandon Marshall. For those of you I haven't met, we want to welcome you here today and say God bless you. Pastor Eddie is here with us. And uh, so if you're with us for the first time or if you're joining us online for the first time, please don't judge the church by what you hear today. Give the, uh, the pastor an opportunity to minister to you and please come back. But it's so great to have you. It is summertime at City Point. And many of us experienced our first taste of Texas heat yesterday. If, you, if it's your first time in 90 plus degrees in Texas, God bless you. Thank you for surviving. Uh, and we've had so much rain and everybody says, oh, we've had enough rain. Believe me, the day will come where we pray for that rain. And, and, uh, and so we're, we're just excited. It's, uh, it's summertime. It's a good season. And, and uh, how many of you have enjoyed Pastor Eddie's uh, sermons on the Holy Spirit and the series that we just came through? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, so as we think about summertime, as we think about the seasons, you know, most of the time we think about a season as uh, the weather. We correlate it with the weather that happens during that, and that's kind of how we break up our year. We, we associate that with how much uh, rainfall or how, much, uh, how many leaves are falling in the summer, spring, fall, all the different seasons. But I want you to think about the seasons as differently uh, in the next uh, few weeks as we go through this series. I want you to think about a specified time to do a specified thing. 
a certain season for a certain reason. I want you to think about a, a time that God is calling you into. In fact, as I was praying about uh, what to share uh, this week during this series, the Lord started speaking to me about building and rebuilding. And so I just believe that we're in a season of building, that many of us are coming into a season of building something or rebuilding or restoring something, that God wants to do a work in our life to further a thing or to see a thing accomplished. And, and, uh, and so it's with that in mind that I want to take you to the book of Zechariah today. Uh, please, uh, if you have your Bible, if you haven't found it before, uh, we don't have that kind of time. It is in there, I promise you. Uh, just tap, and if you tap on your screen, uh, it's Z-E-C-H, not Z-A. I mean, it's all over the place. Hard to find. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 10 is where we'll start today. It's one of my favorites. It's a very uh, familiar passage of Scripture. It says, do not despise these small beginnings. One version says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. For the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. The Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for the works that you have called us to. Thank you, Lord, for your people here, the anointing on your people, God, to accomplish and do all that you have placed in their heart, God. Thank you that through this word today, Lord, they will be encouraged and strengthen their hearts, God, to move forward. Those who feel stuck, Lord, those who feel burdened down or overwhelmed, I thank you, Father, but by your grace, you make a way for them. Thank you for your strength now. Thank you for the anointing to preach the incomparable word of God. I thank you that the word does what I cannot do, that it ministers to the hearts of the people, that your word is able to do in a moment what a lifetime of rehab could not accomplish, what decades in medicine could not fix, your word can fix in a moment, not in just any moment, in this moment. And that's where we place our faith in you today, God, to move in our hearts, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, the story of Zechariah is one that's, uh, that's maybe not as familiar as some others, but uh, the pe people of Israel have been held in Babylon in captivity for about seven, 70 years, which is, it equates to about three generations. So there are certain generations of people who were born throughout that time that had never seen what Israel was. They had never seen Jerusalem and its glory and all of that, but Jerusalem had been destroyed and been, uh, been torn down, and the children of Israel were once again in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. And one of the first people to come out of exile was this man, Zechariah. He was a priest. He was a leader among the people. And he came out of exile and came home to Jerusalem to find it destroyed. God started speaking to his heart in that moment. And he said, I want you to rebuild the temple. I'm going to place you in charge of this very important project to rebuild my temple in, the, in, in Jerusalem. Now, imagine for just a moment what he might have been facing as he gets there. He's got his own family to be concerned with. He's got his own. He doesn't even have a house, and God is asking them to rebuild my house, rebuild my place of worship, reconsider me first in that moment. And, and of all the things that he could have said to Zechariah, of all the, the encouragement that he could have given him, he could have said, I'm going to give you all the resources, and you'll have all the people you need, and it'll all be great, and it'll all be happy, and it'll all be all those things. He says this, Zechariah, do not despise the day of small beginnings. It's almost like God knows something about beginnings that we don't. And what God knows about beginnings that we don't is that they are despicable. Small beginnings have a tendency to be notoriously difficult. There are things that happen in those moments that will, that will cause us to want to change our mind. There are things that happen in new seasons and new things. And I believe that as God is calling us to rebuild and to, new, to, to begin a season of building, it's important to share. Do not, be, do not despise the day of small beginnings. And Zechariah was not prepared for this moment. It was something that the Lord had placed on his heart. And oftentimes God will say things to us that are contrary to our circumstances that we are experiencing right now. Zechariah might have said something like, Lord, I am not the person for this job. I am not the one for this. I am, not, I am exhausted. I am tired. We just got back. Can we just wait a moment until it's convenient for me, which is oftentimes what we do when the Lord asks us to do something. Not now, Lord. Uh, you, you know, let me just finish up this one career and I'll start another one, but not, not now. Not in the middle of what I got going on, but God always speaks contrary to the way that we view ourselves and the circumstances that we're in. He's famous for it. 
He met a man named Gideon. Uh, the Bible says that uh, Gideon was the weakest of the weak in his father's house, and he was hiding from the, uh, from the people that had them in captivity. He was threshing wheat in a place where you don't thresh wheat. In other words, he was hiding from them. He was doing his job in a place that they wouldn't expect it so that no one would find him. He was scared to death, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, God is with you, mighty man of valor. He starts looking around like there got to be somebody else in the room. I thought I was by myself. You, talk, you can't be talking to me. I'm a nobody. God speaks to the us that he knows, not the one that we know. This prophet Samuel showed up to Saul, found Saul, as, as was commanded by the Lord. He said, you're going to anoint this man king. So he, it's, it's really quite a clever plan that he, that, that he sent Saul out to find his father's donkeys. And all along the way, he, Samuel said, you're going to encounter some people that are looking for some donkeys. Tell them the donkeys are found. So he encounters Samuel in this moment. And Samuel says, your father's donkeys have been found. He said, but if you stay with me tonight, tomorrow I will tell you all that's in your heart. Very powerful piece of scripture. And then he announces to Saul that he will be king. King and Paul, Saul says, no, no, no. <laughs> no, you got the wrong guy. I'm afraid not. I am not a king. I, am not, I don't have kingly thoughts. I don't have kingly stature. I don't have kingly anything. And yet, Lord, the Lord called him to be that, contrary to the way he viewed himself. He said to him, you're going to encounter some prophets coming down from the mountain." When you encounter these prophets, you will also prophesy, and you will become a different man. See, uh, Pastor Eddie did a wonderful job explaining the power of the Holy Spirit in our life over the last few weeks, and one of the things that, he, that stood out to me the most is that there's a version of ourselves that we can never know apart from the operation of the Holy Spirit in our life who was designed to reveal us to us. There's a, a piece of you, there is a you that you haven't met yet, a you that only the anointing of God knows, a you that only the Spirit of God can reveal. It's when we're obedient in those moments that he calls us to something that he starts to reveal the us that we have no knowledge of. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or imagine according to his power that works in us, this power that's working through us, it does things that we cannot imagine or ask so it stands to reason that God can call us a name or, or, or call us to something or to rebuild something that we didn't ask for or think of. We have a, mind, a tendency in our minds to rationalize everything and sort of try to work it out logically. This doesn't make sense. I'm not who you think I am. And, and Jesus, the Lord is telling you, yes, you are. You're the you that I know you are. Give me a chance to reveal that you to you. Even the King David when he was anointed king, wasn't even invited to the party. They came over, and Samuel, that same prophet, shows up to Jesse's house and says, I'm going to anoint one of your sons king. And Jesse's so excited, he invites all the sons except for the one. They leave him out in a field, ruddy, redheaded. There's a ginger. Any gingers in the house, we love you. God bless you. This is your guy. This is your guy. Watch this story. Finally, after the anointing doesn't work for any of the sons, any of the ones that, that seem ready, any of the ones that match the description of what a king could be, the anointing doesn't touch any of them. And yet, when this teenage boy comes up out of the field smelling like sheep and sweaty and doesn't even know what's going on, the anointing says, that's the one. Let me reveal to you the you that you don't know yet. The Spirit of God is designed to work within our lives and reveal a piece of us day by day, a new piece of us that was designed for his glory. So if the Lord is speaking to you to build, it's, it's likely contrary to where you are in the moment. We want to make sure that we are convenient in what we're doing, and God wants to make sure that we are obedient in what we're doing. That's why he's so powerful. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. Years ago when I first did this, the very first time I did this, uh, I was asked to speak at a nursing home in McKinney, Texas. And they, 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 the person who was training me and, and the person who uh, discovered me, he said, oh, I set you up. You're going to preach at a, a nursing home. And I was so excited. I put together my first ever message, and it was a mess, more than a message. It was really something. 
and they brought uh, these people in from the nursing home. There were about 40 or 50 people there, and, and I had a table in front of me, and I was getting ready to deliver this message, and there was a little lady in the back in a wheelchair that kept going, I'm choking. <laughs> Three or four times, I'm choking. I'm like, is somebody going to help this lady? She's choking. I said, no, that's just what she says when she wants some chocolate milk. She's okay. <laughs> these experiences. I get into the message, and I feel like I'm doing good, and there's another little lady right here who's got her head on the table. And about every five minutes, she raises up and just cuss me like a dog and then put her head back down. I'm thinking, oh, Lord, <laughs> this is what it's about. <laughs> Jesus, you didn't tell me none of this. But if I had despised that day, I wouldn't be standing in this one because God knows the beginning you need to get you to the ending he had designed, to get you to the destiny. Do not despise the days of small beginnings. That same little shepherd boy, that same little hero spent all his time out in the field. The Bible says that he, he killed lion and bear as they came out after his sheep. He killed them with a sling. He was so proficient with it that, that uh, his team that joined him later as he became king, he had a, a team of people who used the sling as a weapon and they could hit a human hair from a long way off. They're so accurate. See, we think he just went out there and started chunking rocks. That's not what happened. It was very accurate. In fact, uh, these people had, could, could release that rock at the same speed and velocity of a 9 millimeter bullet. David was bad. See, he went out there hoping that he would kill a giant. He knew. He knew when he stepped on the field that that giant was as good as dead. Why? Because I've done this a thousand times before when nobody looked, when it didn't matter to anybody I was doing this. And if he had despised those days, then he wouldn't have made it in that one. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. That's why he could look at that giant with confidence the giant said, you're a dog. You come out of me with this little boy with a stick. David said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to cut off your head, and I'm going to feed your body to the birds. Woo, that's brave talk for a little red-headed teenager. <laughs> but he knew something that that giant didn't know, and that is that God prepared him in the alphas for the omega that God had designed. The Bible teaches us that God is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end. He is in the beginning with us and he is in the end and he's already stood in the end and saw the outcome that he wants and he's asking you to walk forward into the beginning that he had designed. So I just declare over you today that this is a season of breakthrough for you. Uh, the season, a season for breakout that you will build, that you will overcome, that you will step forward into the destiny that God has for you, that you will not quit, that there's a grace on you in this season that God is giving to you, even right now in this moment, that is going to cause that strength to push you further than you think you could go. Arise and build and do not despise the day of small beginnings. It's easy. Easy to be faithful over a whole bunch. <laughs> One of the easiest things you'll ever do in your life is to rule over much. What's difficult is to be faithful over little. Because much gives the energy for you to want to be faithful over it. But when it's little, it's a fight. And God knows that in that beginning, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be despicable. But if you fight through that, then you will see the omega he had designed for you. So I th started thinking about people that, uh, that, that, that are called of God to do things and build things and why sometimes it doesn't work. Why are there so many people who begin things and stop them? It's because of that difficulty in beginnings. And there are many people here who are beginning a new thing. Maybe you're beginning a new relationship. Maybe you're beginning a new career, a new season of life. Maybe there's something that God is asking you to do and you can't figure out how in your logical mind. Why do we stop? It's because of the pressures that come along with it. Nothing great was ever created without pressure. I want to describe to you some of the pressures that maybe we face. And the first one is this, the pressure to duplicate what was. See, if we rebuild something, we look back at what was and we try to recreate that in our minds because there's a, there's a season of life that we did enjoy. There's probably people in this room who thought, I was a lot closer to God last year than I feel like I am now. 
Or there was a certain period of time in my life where I was completely on fire, but I'm no longer there. And so we try to recreate that season where God is calling us forward into a new and deeper relationship, a, a higher thing. Isaiah says it like this in 43 verse 19. It says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? How can we not see it? It's because our eyes are so focused on the, what was great. We want to re replicate that. Human nature is, is, tells us that, that we want to redo or do over again the things that gave us a euphoric or good feeling. This is how addictions are formed because it releases this dopamine in our mind and it makes us feel good. And so we want to repeat the behaviors that give us good feeling. And we shy away from and try to exile everything that gave us a negative behavior, a negative feeling in our life. We never want to do those things again. That's how we're designed. Several years ago, and when I was a, a, a little boy, I was uh, six, sixth grade, I think, somewhere in there. Uh, we used to have a skating rink in our town in McKinney, Texas. And how many of you know what a skating rink is? Yeah, I'll slow it down for you people that aren't from Texas. A skating rink. See, in Texas, we went skating. Y'all might have went skating, whatever it is. The skating rink. And on Friday nights, they had this thing where the, you know, the kids would come in uh, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. And they would shut down all the lights, and they would have all these neon lights and disco balls, and they'd be playing a little Bon Jovi, shot through the heart. <laughs> a great time to be alive. Problem was, I'm not built for speed. So I didn't skate. I, put, I had skates on. I'd be hanging out over there on the rail, faking a football injury, like, no, I'm good. Then one night, this beautiful young lady named Lisa, still cool to this day. She had braces. She came skating past me. I thought, uh-oh. She grabbed my hand. She said, let's skate. That's how they talk with braces. Let's go skate. <laughs> so she grabbed my hand, and off we went. And what I realized in that moment is that skating is not that hard. I could do this. A couple of times, I'm like, oh, okay, all right. But for the most part, I got it. Now, I wasn't doing the limbo and doing all the things. There's always that one referee guy in there that graduated a long time ago but still goes to the high school parties. You know who I'm talking about? <laughs> he got the mustache and he's doing too much, skating backwards, doing all that, skating around like someday you'll be cool like me. I'm like, bro, I'm just trying to make it through social studies, man. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> Having a nice time in there. What no one ever told me was how to stop. So I just... Assumed in my own mind because I didn't want to ask and seem, uh, you know, inexperienced. I just assumed that those little erasers on the front of the, the you know what I'm talking about, the little stoppers, <laughs> that those were brakes. So when it came time to stop, I jammed them both in the floor. <laughs> Fell flat on my face and pushed my teeth through my front lip right in front of everybody. Now to her credit, sweet Lisa reached down, grabbed me, helped me up, bleeding all over the place, embarrassed took me over, cleaned me up, and she was my girlfriend from sixth grade through seventh grade. <laughs> young love. So if you're here, young people, and you're looking to mingle, you're single, you're ready for some love, run your face into a wall. <laughs> Sympathy does a lot of things for you. I don't recommend it. I don't, I don't recommend it. Never went back. Never went back from that moment on. The people would ask, why don't you go skating anymore? And I'm like, I can't tell you. <laughs> But I can't go. Never tried it again. Never put on another pair of skates for the rest of my life. And I don't know what I missed out on. All I can tell you, a lot, said my sister, who's a good skater. High five, baby. I wonder how many things we miss out on in life because of one bad experience that we never want to duplicate again. And we shut that piece of our life off and say, I no longer can do that. God wants into that season. God wants into the things that you've shut off just because of one negative experience. He wants to reopen your heart to people even though people have wounded you, even though even church people have wounded you. He wants to reopen your heart to who he is in this season of life. We have to be able to do a new thing, to be able to move on from what was and to allow him to rejuvenate during this season of building. In order to be great, you've got to let go of good. Those are the rules. Because as long as your hands are full of good, you can no longer grasp anything larger. You've got to be willing to let go of some things and not become too consumed with duplicating what was. One of the other pressures is this. It's the pressure 
to be further along than we are now. We feel like the clock is ticking and I'm getting older and things are still, I feel like I'm running in circles and I'm still in the same situations. I'm still in the same circumstances. I should be further than I am now. We compare ourselves to everyone else around us that is the same age or been doing this even less time than we have and it seems like they're further along because all their Instagram pictures are beautiful. (laughs) They're using filters, by the way. I don't know if y'all knew this. She don't look like that. She don't look like that. Now, I hate to, I'm not trying to spoil any of y'all's secrets, but it is what it is. And we compare ourselves to everybody else's life and say, I should be further along. And that causes us to start looking bad on ourselves and start to, to, to allow these depressions and anxieties and this pressure to, to be more, to do more, to be further along in life than we are right now. But everything happens in God's timing. God who lives outside of time. He is eternal. He does not live and is not in the time constraints that we are. If there's a thing for you to accomplish and you walk in his spirit, he will extend time as long as necessary to accomplish that thing in your life. But we want it convenient. I, Lord, I, I, don't, I, 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 want, I got a good flow going right now. Everything's good. Someday maybe I'll get to that, but not now. The Lord says, oh, you having fun going that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's go this way. I say, oh, Lord, maybe you didn't understand. Man, I just started this job. Yeah, I know. I want you to quit and start your own business. Say what? Oh, by the way, it's going to be hard. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. So, several years ago, I was preaching at a church in Austin, Texas. I'm filling in for a pastor friend of ours. And, and uh, you know, one of my heroes in the faith is a man named uh, Charles Neiman who lives in El Paso, Texas. And he's associated with the same pastor. In fact, I was filling in for that pastor because he was with Charles Neiman. And so my wife and I went down and, and we, were, we were around. Um, uh, and, and my wife walks around and meets everybody. She's a social butterfly. She must know you. And... Um, <laughs> So she's meeting people, and I'm standing on the front row, you know, and worship starts, and we're having a nice time worshiping. It was a beautiful moment, and, and uh, all of a sudden this video comes on, and it's my hero, Charles Neiman, standing with that pastor and welcoming me and thanking me for being there. It was just a beautiful moment. I'm like, holy cow, this is cool. And I'm getting ready to walk up on the stage, and my wife leans over in my ear and says, I never thought I would change careers, but I think I'm going to. Okay. <laughs> Can we, talk, can we talk about this later? I mean, I, I, of all the moments, I mean, I'm all in my feels. I'm like, oh, they know me. I, they love me. They're so glad I'm here. I never thought I'd change careers, but I think I'm going to. I said, baby, you're going to have to put that on the back burner. And I went up there and, and, and tried my best to deliver a good message after church. I said, what was that about? She said, I was standing there in worship, and the Lord told me, that I should break away from my company and start my own business and start another business at the same time. It's like, yeah, that, that can't be Jesus. That, he knows better than that. <laughs> I'm already, I work at two jobs and I'm a youth pastor and now you want to put all it? Lord, help us, help us, help us, help us, help us, Jesus. But she did. And that was 14 years ago. She's been very successful at what she does. But there were times where we could have hated it. Oh, it was hard. We had a, a, a young son at the time. He was three years old. And so I was pulling double duty on all these things. And we were hit or miss. But it was in that moment, you know, we look back now and go, that could have been a lot harder. The only way we can really describe it is that there was a grace on our life in that season to accomplish what God had designed. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. When the thought process hits you that you need to do more, the pressure will be right behind it. Be willing to fight through the pressure. Be willing to, to go further, to do more, to be, to be different. Allow the Spirit of God to show you the you that he designed to accomplish that moment. The Apostle Paul said it like this, I have... He said, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I'm in. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. 
I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. These ups and downs and this timing of all these things, the pressures of, of wanting to, 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 to be further along, to move forward. We have to learn to be content and be joyous in the moment that we're in. There are certain things that are necessary to build, and one of those things is discipline, the discipline to put one foot in front of the other, the courage to start, the, 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 the grace to move and keep moving. Now, I'm a, a dreamer by nature. I, I have, I've always been a dreamer. I'm a dreamer that, uh, you know, I, I believe that God has great things for my life, and I dream of those things. I, I dream of, of, of doing this. I dreamt this moment years ago. My wife is what I call a dream killer. Let me explain. <laughs> Let me explain. Let me explain. You see, I'll say something like, oh, babe, I'm going to take over the world this week. If it's all right with you, she'll go, babe, just fine by me. Now, what you'll need is a spreadsheet, and you'll need uh, the A and the B, and you, this is the step one is what you're going to have to do, and you do that for 30 minutes a day, and by the time it's over, I'm like, I don't even want to do this anymore. <laughs> never mind. I just thought it was cool. I just, never mind. Never mind. But I understand the necessity for those things and for that structure, and all those things are wonderful, but don't place structure and discipline over God's grace and will in your life. No matter how many times someone has come across to you wrong, no matter how many times people have tried to stop you, with God's grace and hand on your life, you cannot be stopped. In fact, I speak that over you now in Jesus' name. For those of you who have been knocked down, you're going to bounce right back up to the top. There's a Joseph anointing on you that though you were sold into slavery and though you were placed into prison and though you were knocked down, you're just going to keep coming right back to the top, right back to the top, as long as you don't quit because it's hard to beat a person that don't want to quit and you cannot lose with the grace of God on your life. Arise and build and do not despise the day of small beginnings. Hmm. The final pressure I want to talk to you about is this, and it's a big one. Pressure to satisfy everybody pressure to think that everybody has to be happy with what I'm doing and if not that I'm failing and what happens more times than not is that we give our entire lives to our careers and what we have left we give to our families and we look up and the one person who suffers for all of it is you because you feel like you need to give your life away to everyone else for this thing to make sense unless you have a God there that's restoring that and letting you know that it's not just about what you accomplish it's about who you are and your relationship with him and allow him to restore those things in your life those empty places he is calling you forward to Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says whatever you do do it with all your heart oh such a good scripture don't do anything halfway do it with all your heart as if you were working for the Lord and not for human masters. Since you know that, that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. The work you're doing is not without reward and it is not because people tell you how good you are. It is not because people are, are satisfied and, and, and happy with you. It is an inheritance that comes only from him. It is the Lord Christ that you are serving. So regardless of what you do, don't do it to satisfy people. Look, people are great, and I love people. But people are fickle. One day they love you, and the next day they hate you. One day they're praising you, the next day that they're talking behind your back. People are just all over the place. But God is faithful in every season. The God who designed you for more. The God who designed you for for great things dream of those days because it's that vision for the future it's that alpha that that omega that he wants you to have that is worth whatever's going on in this beginning now do not despise the day of small beginnings there's a plan that is beyond where you are and i believe that this is the season god is calling you into that plan I believe that this is a season where God's grace will be manifest in your life more than ever before. Things that used to be difficult are going to be easy. He 
He's going to create rivers where there used to be deserts. He's going to create walkways where there used to be overgrowth. He's going to create, uh, 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 remove stumbling blocks and hurdles and all of those things that had stopped you before. It's going to be easy in this season. Don't despise the days that aren't. Don't look back and regret and say, I should have done this better. Just do the next thing good and do it with all your heart and do it for the Lord and not for man. Not for man. I'm going to pronounce a blessing over you just because I want to. Is that okay? I feel like in this next season, God's grace is going to shine in your life. You're going to look back and say, how was that so easy when all those difficulties were there? It's because of the grace of God. Now may the Lord my God who is good bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine on you. Give you peace. Whatever you choose to do, may it prosper. Everything that your hands touch will turn to good. And he's going to work all those situations out for your good. Not just the good situations, but all of them for your good because he loves you. Because his grace is for you people are going to be drawn toward you that are going to help you. Even right now, they are moving toward you, the help that you need. People that will run alongside you. People that will form relationships and bonds with you. I speak lifelong bonds to you with good people. Strength. May you always be generous. May you always be able to. God give you peace. Father, thank you for your people. Thank you for the love that you have for this house and those in it. Lord, thank you for our, our, the opportunity to be who we are, not only here, but to the ends of the earth, to everywhere, Lord. That the effective nature of these people goes far beyond what their eyes can see, what they can comprehend. Lord, speak to their hearts the next step, God. Thank you for strength in difficult seasons. Thank you for the omega that you designed. You know the alpha that we need. So whatever these new beginnings are, God, we choose to be steadfast in them. We choose to be faithful in them. And I thank you, Lord, that the end result is there will be joy in their house. Thank you, Lord, that you rejoice, that you rejoice to see the work begin. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. What a great word. You got some praise. Amen. I want us all to stand, if you could, and uh, I want to give some people in this room an opportunity, the most important opportunity you'll ever have in your life. And so I'd love for everybody to close their eyes, just bow their heads, and just right there, get alone with God. There's people in this room today that you need to surrender your heart and your life to Jesus. Maybe you thought, well, once I get my life cleaned up, I'll come to him. That's not what you do. He takes you as you are. All the good and the bad, the broken and the whole, the mistakes and the successes. He loves you just as you are. Scripture says this, is that it's our sin that divided us from God. Jesus died on a cross so that sin could be forgiven and we could be in relationship with him today. And today is the day for somebody to begin that relationship. Know that heaven is your home, that Jesus is your Savior. You'll be made new. Scripture calls it being born again. In fact, Scripture says this in Romans 10, 9, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So we're going to have, everybody in this room is going to pray this prayer, but for some, this is your prayer today. This is your decision. Whether you surrender your life for the very first time to Jesus or you're coming back to your faith, you're rededicating, reprioritizing him today in your life. So if you're here today and you say, Pastor, when you pray that prayer, this is, this is my prayer. This is my day surrendering my life to Jesus or I'm recommitting my life to him. If you're in either one of those places, can you raise your hand real high so I can see the palm of your hand? I want to know who I'm praying with this, this morning in this room. Amen. That's awesome. So many hands. I want us all to just say this prayer together with those who lifted their hands. Everybody say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. And I choose to follow you. Follow my heart. From this day forward. Thank you that I'm born again. Thank you that I am forgiven. In Jesus' name. 
Father, I thank you for those who made that decision today. And I pray that for all of us in this room, God, grant us the boldness to be your voice to this world that we live in. Then we leave these doors, walk out of these doors, God. Put people in our path that need you. Make decisions to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God praise for those who made those decisions today. What awesome, what an awesome way to end the service. Um, and so I want to say this to those who prayed that prayer a minute from the bottom of your heart. Three things. Number one, get to church as often as you can. You just started something. That was not the end of something. That was the beginning of something. So get to church as often as you can. Not only just show up. Don't live in a bubble here in this building. But put down some roots. Develop some relationships. Maybe go to a small group. Maybe serve. We have Connection Point today after the third service. And that's how you join the church. And we'll talk about some very essential things. I think it's a great place to start. We'll talk about the healthy habits of a believer. And we'll do a thing called Discovery. Where we kind of help you understand the way God made you and the gifts that he's placed in your life. The second thing I'd really encourage you to do is when we have water baptism, I believe it's in July, is you make a decision to make a public declaration, I'm born again. And that declaration is simply this, you're water baptized. Who used to be is buried and who comes up from that water is a brand new person. And then the third thing, in just a moment, our prayer team's going to be down here and they would love to pray with you. Just say, hey, I prayed the prayer with the pastor and they'll just pray with you and, and just celebrate with you what God has done. There'll be many others down here getting prayer too, not just you. But I encourage you to do that. Uh, The last thing we're going to do today is to receive our our tithe and offering. Uh, We give every service, uh, every single Sunday. And the scripture of the Lord kind of laid on my heart for this year is this. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Bring the tithe. Bring that offering. That there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. See if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven. For out such blessing there will not be room enough to receive it. This scripture is reiterated all throughout the Bible about putting God first. And putting God first in an area allows God to bless that area. It's no different than our financial stewardship, just like any other area in your life. So for those who are giving today, for those who want to give by card, there's a QR code over my shoulder. You can scan. For those who have cash or checks, there's envelopes in the back of your seat. And the ushers will be by in just a second to grab those. Also, if you filled out a connection card, this is the time that you, you, turn, you throw those in that bucket as it passes you by. So ushers, if you could, go ahead and, and pass the buckets um, I want to remind y'all today that um, at the very end of this service, our prayer team is going to be down here as we close with the worship song. And whether you have a big need or a small need, I encourage you to let somebody pray with you. And sometimes I'll talk to somebody and they're like, oh, Pastor, I've never done that before. I didn't grow up in a church that did that. And I would say, what a shame, because this the interconnectedness that we have as the body is how we grow. You're not going to grow in your faith if you stay isolated from other believers. And maybe for you, it's even a step of humility to admit that you have a need. The minute that you want help in your life. But what if God shows up here in this altar today? What if a miracle takes place in your life? What if that thing you've been praying for, God has just been waiting for you to step out of your bubble and say, hey, will you pray with me about it? And I promise you, there's prayer warriors down here that we're going to believe God with you for the miracle that you need in your life. And so let me pray over our offering. Prayer team's coming down, and then we'll worship and we'll be dismissed. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Um, hear your word. Thank you for the time, Father, to obey and honor you in our finances. I thank you that you are the God of more than enough. Father, we do not operate in fear with our finances. Father, we operate in trust and we worship you with them. But Father, we understand it is you who gave us the mental ability to even do what we do for a living, the skill in our hands. So Father, I thank you today for the opportunity to serve. Father, I thank you for those who are giving today. That you bless what remains in their hands. Father, those who are giving missions today, thank you for um, Father, that money to be sown like seed into the ground will bear fruit. Father, for those who are giving to believe, our, 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 our uh, opportunity fund for our future. God, thank you for those seeds, and we pray for harvest in all of them. In Jesus' name.